Welcome to another episode of Marriage Covenant 101. Hey, listen, I'm your host, Chadwick Cruz, and today, I'm so sad, I'm without my co-host. My co-host has a dental procedure going on, and she wasn't able to make it with me tonight. So I want to send a shout out to my beautiful wife, Tamika Cruz, and she will be back, I guess, next week's episode. So y'all pray for her strength in the Lord. So, okay, today we're going to have a great show talking about material things. A lot of people are in love with things. So we're going to talk about how material things at some point becomes meaningless. So, so it's okay to have things, but please don't let things have you. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. A lot of people say, yeah, money is the root of all evil. No, it's not money is the root of all evil because the Bible says that money answers everything. So money is not the root of all evil. It's the love of money. Some people go over and beyond to get money. And they do things that they shouldn't do, commit crime, break laws, or whatever, have you, just to get money. Just to take the money and to buy material things, trying to keep up with the Joneses. They want people to say, hmm, look at me. Wow, this is what I have. You don't have this. You don't have these yet. You can't afford these, but I have them. Listen, material things are meaningless. So today we're going to be talking about um, King Solomon. Solomon realizes that all of his achievements and all of the material things he had established in this world would become nothing when he died. See, the certainty of death in the book of Ecclesiastes, the second chapter, it talks about the certainty of death. And I think it was in Ecclesiastes 2, um, 17, verses 16 and 17, it says, For there is no remembrance of the wise more than of the fool forever, seeing that which now is in the days to come shall all be forgotten. And how... And how dies the wise man as a fool? Therefore, I hated life because the work that is wrought under the sun is grievous unto me, for all is vanity and vexation of the spirit. Meaning that everything that I've done and everything that I accomplish is meaningless after I'm here no longer to enjoy it. See, one thing we can say is for certain, death is a certainty. The equality of all men is, I'm going to change that. All men are equal at the time of death. That's one time you could say that everybody's equal. At birth and at death, all men are equal. See, in verse 16, Solomon saw death. And he saw that death makes no, no difference between the wise man and the foolish man. There's no difference. So at this moment, I'm going to do a little advertising because we have our pastor's appreciation this coming Sunday, um, the June the 5th. I mean, yes, this June, Sunday, June the 5th at um, 12 o'clock p.m. at Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, 331 Common Loop Road, Midway, Alabama. So right now, I'm going to give a shout out to my pastor, Pastor Willis C. Burks, and his first lady, and our first lady, Miss Livonia Burks. But hey, play that first video, let these people know about pastor's appreciation.
I will be looking around to see you guys there. I know we're going to hear a word from the Lord. Y'all, please be out to support this event. Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, Pastor's Appreciation, Pastor Willie C. Birch. Now we're getting right back into it. Um, So for that, Solomon was saying at the point of death, there's no difference between a wise man and a fool. Um, I, I talk to a lot of my friends and we always talk about legacy. What are they going to say about me when I can no longer speak for myself? And the, you do things today for your success of tomorrow. But material things are meaningless at the point of death. When I never heard anybody who died and say, man, I'm worried about where my car is going to go or I'm worrying about my houses and land and things of that nature. No, when people die, you guess what they're worried about? Family members and mostly where they're going to spend eternity. For there is no more remembrance of the wise than of the fool forever. You know, it's no more remembrance of the two. And since all of that is to be forgotten in the days to come, and how does a wise man die as a fool? He, a wise man die as a fool contemplating the why, where his possessions will land. So the edge of the fool to the wise. Verse 7, Solomon was talking about it. The fool has an edge on the wise man because he compared the wise to the fool. He's more regretful and miserable. The fool is more regretful and miserable. Therefore, I hate life because the work that was done under the sun was distressing me for all his vanity and grasping for the wind. See, the consummation of deeds. We're going to talk about that, the consummation of deeds. See, the departure. Solomon talked about it in verses 18 and 19. He said, Solomon can't bring everything he has built. He can't. He can't take it with him. Then I hated all of my labor in which I had toil under the sun because I must leave it to man who will come after me. That means when he's gone, he got to leave it all behind to the people who are coming behind him. And then he said in verse 19, Solomon, he regrets. This was verse 19 we're talking about. He regrets that he will leave everything to Rehoboam. And who knows whether he will be wise or a fool. Yet he will rule over all my labor in which I told and in which I have shown myself wise under the sun. This also is vanity. Note. Remember this. After Solomon's death, Rehoboam turned out to be a fool in many ways. And if you want to read it, read it in 1 Kings, the 12th chapter. I mean, the 1 Kings, 12th chapter and the 14th chapter. You'll see all the ways that Rehoboam came out to be a fool and all the bad things that he did. But just read into it. So, the despair. See, verses 20 and 21, Solomon, the wisest of all men, made the worst use of his wisdom. Because he said, therefore, I turn my heart and despair of all the labor in which I had tall under the sun. For there is a man whose labor in whom... For there is a man whose labor in with wisdom, knowledge, and skill, yet he must leave his heritage to a man who has not labored for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. That's what Solomon said. He said, this is also 
a vanity and a great evil. See, this was the discomfort of it. Solomon, the preacher, has gained more pain in his heart. He said this in verses 22 and 23. He said, for what has man for all his labor and for the striving of his heart with which he has toiled under the sun? For all his days are sorrowful and his work burdensome. Even in the night, his heart takes no rest. This also is vanity. Now, in the next part, we're going to talk about the conviction of Solomon, the conviction that he felt in his inner man. But this after, I show y'all a video that really, really blessed my soul. Play that next video, my brother. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without burdens. Let me work upon the waters. Wherever you would call me Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander And my faith will be much stronger In the presence of my Savior Spirit lead me where my trust is Upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail, and there I find you in the mysteries and oceans deep. My faith will stay.
Spirit, lead me where my faith without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you should call me. Take me deeper than my faith could ever wander. Mm, I love that song, man. Ooh-wee. Wherever you should call me. See, that's what we got to be. We got to be dependent on the spirit to lead us, man. But um, we're going to talk about Solomon right now. And see, we finna get into the part, um, this part of where Solomon was. We, we going to be talking about the, this is a very, 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 we just talked about, before the video, we would talk about the discomfort that Solomon faced. Now, we're going to talk about the conviction of Solomon. And this is going to be in Ecclesiastes, second chapter still, but we're going to be in verse 24 now. And um, see, we call this the, the merriment. It's the fun part, you know. Well, Solomon realizes something. Solomon realizes that it's much better to be satisfied in simple living. He realized that. He said, nothing is better for a man than that he should eat and drink and that his soul should enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw was from the hand of God. He realized something. He realized. This all came from the hand of God. It's nothing better. See, he, he realized the simplicity in life. And he thought about it. Because this the wise man. This the wise man Solomon. And it's amazing the things that he felt and the things that he went through in this verse. Thinking about death. And then he thinking about all of that other stuff that I have acquired because of God gave me this wisdom. And I have been able to acquire that's worthless. That's meaningless when it's time for me to close my eyes and leave. Or as if my great, a great pioneer, Mr. Alto Shipman, say, when your eyes don't roll back in your head, never to open again, or you went into that room and never to come out of more. That's death. That's rigor mortis done set in. So when that time comes, you know, you don't think about nothing besides your loved ones, your family, the people that you love. Everything else is meaningless. So back at it, because now we we are about to talk to about verse 25. See, Solomon experienced some misery in verse 25, because Solomon realized that. He is more humiliated that the most humble life lived by any person he have lived it. And he's humiliated because of what he's passing on. For who, and it said, this is what the verse 25 said, for who can eat or who can have enjoyment more than I? See, he began, he, he began to think about all the things that he enjoyed in life. And now he was like, hmm, the misery starting to set in. Because he know at the point of death, that will cease. But so now we get into verse 26, which is the meat. It's the message. Solomon realized the superiority of God to all situations. No matter if you're going through a good situation or a bad situation, it's all God. So I'm going to tell you this right here. Because God is something that God is trying to get to you or get through you. Yes, we go through a lot of things, but God knew it in advance. And he could have just as well stopped it. But he knew it was something that you had to learn in that situation. See, it's some situations that I went through in my younger days and as a child that caused me to be the husband I am today. It caused me to be the father that I am today. It caused me to be the businessman that I am today. 
if I hadn't experienced these things, who knows how my life would have turned out? I was talking with my pastor, Pastor Willie C. Burks, and he said a lot of times we take, you can use a one event and you can use it in your life two separate ways. Meaning you can take something that you experience and you can take it a negative and make it as a positive when your, con when your time comes to be in those shoes. Like, I am my father's son but I am not my father. I am my mother's son, but I am not my mother. I am my grandfather's son, but I, grandson, but I am not my grandfather. So it's things that my generations of people did that I take in and I still use to today. Because those concepts, a man making concepts, are still good today. And then it was some negative traits that was in the bloodline that I don't take with me today. I turn negativity into the positive. And you can do it. If you've been hurt anywhere in your life, then make sure that you don't hurt the people who love you like you've been hurt. Right then, you broke the generational cycle. Back to something else. I don't know why I went there, but God be the glory. Right now, I guess what we'll do is we'll take time to pay some bills to our great sponsors. First of all, we have Imperial Painting and Design Company. That's a, that's a great painting company, and it's owned by Jacoby Cruz. And listen, for... Give him a call for a free estimate at 334-733-0894. And I stand behind it, the best painting you'll ever receive in the state of Alabama. No one does it better. Imperial, Imperial Painting and Design Company. <laughs> then we have J. Cruz the Barber. He's, he's a barber at Cruz Barbershop and More. Located at 1110 Andrews Avenue, Ozark, Alabama. Listen, for you, if you're in need of a great haircut and a great conversation, call Jamari the Barber. For appointments, you can give him a call at 334-400-6270. Again, 334-400-6270. J. Cruz, the barber. Then, Beyond Fundamentals Basketball Training, LLC. If you want to learn the game of basketball the professional's way, call Roy Daniels at 334-303-5178. Beyond Fundamentals Basketball Training, LLC. Then we have Solutions of Ozark, Alabama. When impressions count, count on solutions. Their top priority is making you a satisfied return customer. They specialize in signs, LED signs, printing, banners, promotionals, T-shirts, and much, much more. Listen, call Tom Littleton at 4074 Highway 231 South, Suite E, and I'm giving his address, that's Ozark, Alabama, when I should have been giving his phone number, 347-74-0408. Call him. Solutions. Then we have Bright Futures Children's Center, Location 2, where we're letting our light shine. Give us a call at 334 334- 443-0497. We're enrolling for our summer program and we're hiring. That's Bright Futures Children's Center, location two. Then we have Roofing and Restoration. That's Forbes Consulting Agency. And you can give them a call. Well, their phone number's not listed, but you can email them at Forbes Roofing and restoration.com. 
Then we have Trey Avant at State Farm. Like a good neighbor, Trey is there. Give him a call. He has the best rates and the best value. Call him at 334-774-2557. State Farm. Trey Avant. Then we have Bright Futures Children's Center, location one, where we've been letting our light shine. Listen, we right now are enrolling and hiring. We're looking for you. First of all, if you need a job and you want to come aboard, make some good wages for the area, give Miss Tamika a call. Call her at 334-774. 3003 Bright Futures Children's Center. Then we have Bishop, Freeman, and Trophy. They're located at 141 East Broad Street in Ozark, Alabama. Listen, if you're in the market for any framing, trophies, anything that you need, give the bishops a call. Their phone number is 334-774-3784. And as for Danny and Mikhail, hey, listen, it's hard doing this without my help me. God made me a help me, and she's not here. But I'm going to keep going. Hey, we got Kennedy's Unique Savings. He goes by the name of the Soap Man, shouted. He's located at 102 South Main Street, Brandage, Alabama. Listen, he has the five-gallon buckets of soap. He has clothing and apparels and wigs and glasses and groceries. Whatever you need, call Kennedy's Unique Savings. And their number is 334-268-2149. Kennedy's Unique Savings. And then we have Primerica. Ursula S. Wilson is a representative. If you're in the market for some insurance, barrel insurance, life insurance, medical insurance, Roth IRA, if you're in the, if you need to know anything about financial and you need a consultant, listen, call Ursula S. Wilson at 334-798-9077. Or you can call the business phone at 334-887-1155. Primerica, Ursula S. Wilson. Then we have Gateway Realty of Ozark. And we have Mr. Gene Casey. If you're in the market for a new house, if you're looking for some rental, or you're looking to purchase a house, give Gene Casey a call at 334-887. 379-9048. Or you can email him at genecasey at troycable.net. Or you can check his website out at www.sellingozart.com. Gene Casey, Century 21, Gateway Realty of Ozark, INC. Then we have your truly. Cruise Barbershop and more. Listen, we got a cut above the rest. We have a competitive price list, and we're looking for you to come on in and fill up the chair. We are a multicultural, multiracial barbershop. We accept all customers, all clients, everybody welcome. Come see us. Cruz Barbershop, 334-733-0615 is the number for appointments. We're located at 1110 Andrews Avenue, Ozark, Alabama. Cruz Barbershop and more. Then, hey, that's Caitlin Young. Makeup extraordinaire for appointments. Call Caitlin at 334-405. 3428 or go on Facebook and book her at Caitlin Johnson. She is the makeup artist that's making movie stars out of ordinary people. 
Caitlyn Johnson, the makeup artist. Then we have Ursula Wilson, the travel nurse, the diabetes expert educator. Listen, give her a call if you need to know anything about medical. You got di- you need to know about diabetes. You need to know anything that medical that she can help you out with. I promise you she will help you out. She's a travel nurse. So call her at 334-798-9077. Again, 334-798-9077. Ursula S. Wilson, CRMP. C D E. Then we have Tina Atkins, sales consultant at Gillen Ford. If you're in the market for a new or used car, call Tina Atkins at 334-379-0672. Or you can call on the business phone, 334-443. 1,000, and that's Tina Atkins at Gillen Ford. Then we have Thorn Remodeling and Construction. Listen, no job is too big, no job is too small. Thorn Remodel and Construction, do them all. Call Crystal Thornton at 334-723-723. 6425 for a free estimate, or you can call Jermaine Thornton, 334-655-6196. Thornton Remodeling and Construction. Then we have AICDC, which is Accelerated Innovation Community Development Corporation, where we're building one community at a time. Connect with us via email at Accelerated Innovation Community Development, well, Accelerated Innovation CDC 2022 at gmail.com, or you can give myself a call at 334-733-0615, and I can direct you to find out how we can make your community better. Then you have Finish Line Tile, Ozark, Alabama. If you're in the market for a new or used tire, call Zach at 334-774-7744. That's Finish Line Tire in Ozark, Alabama. Then we have Splash My Candy. They have the balloon bar, and they have balloons for all occasions. They have the sip and paint. Listen, they have so many new things, and they're doing photography right now, some professional photography. They, I think they'll cut above Ola Mills now. That's just my opinion, but listen, splash my canvas. You can con- contact them at 334-237-0052. Or you can email them at splashmycamins1 at gmail.com. Then we have My Church Family, Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, located at 331 Common Loop Road, Midway, Alabama, 36053, where Willie C. Burks is the pastor, and I myself, Chadwick Cruz, is the associate pastor. Listen. Come out and worship with us. We would love to have you. We're there on first and third Sunday. Our Sunday school starts at 11 a.m. And our worship service starts at 12 p.m. Come out and be a part of Galilee Missionary Baptist Church. I would like to say thank you to our awesome sponsors, the ones who help make Marriage Covenant 101 such a huge success. So we're getting right back into it. And we're in Ecclesiastes, the second chapter. Now we're going to talk about verse 26. We're going to, this is a repeat of what I said a while ago. It's the message. 
See, Solomon, he recognized the superiority of God in all situations. That was in verse 26. So he recognized, you know, without God being a part of this, none of this wouldn't have happened. My wisdom didn't come just because my name was Solomon. My wisdom came because I asked God for it. And he said he'll give me the desires of my heart. See, this is also let you know that the God who controls the wind will come right in, step right in, and do something for you just because you ask. So, oh yeah, I got to talk about this revival that I went to. This is the fire revival I went to in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh my God. When they say prophecy, like over this way, prophecy, healing, and what's the last one? Deliverance. All of that happened. I seen it with my own eyes. I watched it. The prophetess Maddie Knowledge and Apostle Edison Knowledge. Hey, they was on point up there in Atlanta, Georgia. I said, you hear how I said? I said the the the, the Bammer way in Atlanta, Georgia. The more we was Holy Spirit was so high you could cut it with a knife. I love those kind of meetings because it's nothing like being in the presence of God. His presence. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, your presence is heaven to me. See, it's nothing like being in his presence. That's another show. Today we are talking about how material things are so unimportant when it's time for you to die. Material things are not as important as they were when you was purchasing them. When you feel like tomorrow they will no longer be accessible to me. See, in my conclusion or in closing, I came to the conclusion that all things in this world are meaningless when a person dies. So it's a big folly to love things. So instead, what we value most is salvation that the Lord Jesus Christ sacrificed his life for us to obtain. So storing up treasures on earth is nothing. We are living to store up treasures in our heavenly home. Day after day, remember, remember, we're building blocks to make it to the king in the kingdom of heaven. Building blocks. Every little deed you do, boom, boom, boom. you're climbing the stairway. You're climbing and climbing and climbing. Because listen, and 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 let me tell y'all something. Let me go right here to Matthew 6 and 1 because I need to put this out there. Because, and this is in all red. See, a lot of people, I seen a guy on a, a truck driver the other day. I think he was coming through Montgomery, and there was some homeless guys standing there, and they were raising up money. They was asking, you know, for gifts. And I thought about, you know, the man laying at the gate when Peter was coming through. And um, he asked Peter for arms. And Peter said, silver and gold have a number such as I have, give ID. He said, rise and take up thy bed and walk. That guy never ever was, well, he never had a mind thinking that he could walk because he had been lame all his life. But when Peter did that, he didn't go to the temple and say, hey, y'all, it was a man laying out there, and, and he asked me for a gift, and I didn't give him no money. I gave him his, the ability to walk again. See, he know that he couldn't have said that because he know that it was God who worked on his word. 
Meaning that you put the words in the air. The Bible said, call those things that are not as though they were. I add this to it until they manifest. You keep on saying it until they manifest. But his words took legs and they walked and the man began to walk. So Matthew 6, back to the guy that I seen though, he he didn't give him the guy, no, the homeless guys in Montgomery that was begging for money. He didn't give him no, no cash money. He had a pair of Jordan sneakers out the window. And I said to myself, they were brand new too. He looked like he had never wore them. And I said to myself, he did a good deed, but he burnt his blessing because he showed it on a live Facebook live feed or it was on Instagram or TikTok, one of those. But he burnt his blessing because he did it. I won't say he did it out the goodness of his heart no more. I think now I'm thinking like he did it to make people appear that he was good. Because if he would have did it out of good of his heart, this is what he would have did. Matthew 6 and 1. It says, Take heed that ye do not your alms before men. That means take heed not to give your gifts before men. Alms are a gift, what you give before men, to be seen of them. Meaning don't do it just because you want people to see you do it or don't do it and tell people about it. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, that means when you do give, do not sound the trumpet before men as hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be glory, have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when you doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand does. That thy arms may be in secret, and the Father will see it in secret, himself shall reward thee openly. That means when you do something for someone else, do it in secret. And the God who's seen you do it in secret will reward you openly. Because now you will begin to be blessed and people will be like, man, how did he get that? Or how did she get that? Or how are they living like this? Or where are they getting this from? It comes from the God who's seen you give somebody your last in secret. He's rewarding you openly. I do something that I... I call um, random act of kindness. And what I do is I just find a random person. Now, am I telling you this to make you say I'm a good person? You better not say it. Keep your mouth closed. Don't you put that on me. Don't say he's a good person. Because the Bible say at our best, we just a, a filthy rag in his eyesight. So don't say I'm a good person. I want you to use this same strategy. Do random acts of kindness, and no matter who you do it for, do it in secret and don't tell nobody. You even go and forget about it. God will remind you. The God who seen you do it in secret, because he's everywhere. He's beholding the good and the evil. He sees everything. His eyes is everywhere. The God that's seen you do it, he's going to reward you openly. And people are going to be like, wow. But see, when they see you, they're going to glorify God because they're going to know it had to be God. This wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for God. It had to be God. Hey, at this moment right here, I'm going to say, I thank you guys. I thank y'all for tuning in to Marriage Covenant 101, where your host is Chadwick Cruz, and my co-host is out of pocket. She's dealing with some dental procedures, and I miss her so much because I have to talk a lot less when she's here. But nevertheless, to God be the glory, because 
Yeah. She even spoke of it, though. She said, you're so long-winded, baby. You're so long-winded. And I am. And I am. But God made me like this. So listen, right now I'm going to let our great engineer play that background music. I'm going to take us into a word of prayer. And then Marriage Covenant 101 will be saying good night. So listen, most holy and gracious Father, we thank you, God, for another episode of Marriage Covenant 101. Lord, we thank you for blessing the cities, God. We thank you for blessing the school system, God. Thank you for blessing the churches in our areas, whether that's Barbara Pike, Dale, Henry, Cover, Coffee, Coverton, Lord, Montgomery County, all of the surrounding areas, God. Bless them. Keep them healthy and strong, God. Lord, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that the marriages are being reconciled, God. I, I thank you that the man and woman are turning to you, God, to be the author and the finisher of their, their faith. Lord, I thank you that the single couples are thriving. And Lord, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that the people who are not involved in any relationship, God, they're always involved in a relationship with you. Lord, we thank you for your loving kindness, God, and your wonderful acts of mercy. We thank you for what you have done for us, God. And we will give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, God. Always and forevermore, Jesus, we continue to pray and say amen, amen, amen. Marriage Covenant 101, good night. <laughs>